it's not it's not my connection no it's not oh all right i know it's easy to blame your connection since you're in the <laughs> but it's, uh but it's not no this is on us uh somebody uh no problem to get on another zoom conversation very sorry about that and um uh, sorry for the audience uh i hope you stayed with us um joseph uh floor is back yes. to you i'm sorry so i was talking about i mean uh having isis progression reach uh the town of arsal right and arsal i was saying that it was a remote lebanese village at the eastern border with syria and now you had lebanon facing this alarming and critical situation. And Lebanon actually was the only nation and left and left alone. I think it was the only army to have successfully repelled ISIS invasion after severe fights for almost three years. And the achievement of halting ISIS militants was mainly due in my opinion to the already significant border defense and surveillance forces supported originally by the United Kingdom who assisted LAF to build protected border observation posts and forward operating bases on the eastern border areas. Yep. During that time, LAF was closely monitoring, as you said, all ISIS activities and operations, not only from the border observation posts, but also by using air platforms with long range ISR provided originally by the US. So you have now in August 2017, LAF is ready to launch its Operation Dawn of the Hills successful offensive military operations against ISIS militants deployed in bunkers, caves, and tunnels. And you have that within 10 days, LAF's operation demonstrated efficiency and speed, and it brought back the authority of the Lebanese state to those border area. But of course, this time, I mean, after 10 years was much less than in 2007, as you mentioned. But this time, the main difference in performance was due to left, to left gained experience, I would say. Taking advantage of generations of experienced officers. So you have the lieutenants and captains of Nahr al Barid combat in 2007, where in 2017 now, the majors, colonels, and generals leading left troops. And those same officers with their troops were amongst those who made good use of capabilities such as precision guided munitions, mm -hmm. ISR, air support, air ground, air coordinate and coordinated ground maneuver. And in my humble opinion, I think it was the result absolutely of a left performance, but it was definitely boosted by, by a US steadfast assistant that never stopped since 2006. Mm -hmm. and, and it was most importantly, and I think this is very important, it, it was starting to pay off dividends. Yep. So to close, I believe US assistance was instrumental in ensuring LAF's victory. It played a decisive role by covering for most, I mean, the conduct of combined arms maneuver, aerial reconnaissance, integrated fires, and by most important training generations, as I said, of Lebanese officers and soldiers who continue to have a great professional impact on LAF, by the way. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think all this is ensuring the scoring or what I call excellent professional military performances. Let me use that term that you just used, which is interesting, decisive. So the very final moments of that battle, the laugh <laughs> was the, I think you know what I'm gonna talk <laughs> about, right? <laughs> Don't take me there. <laughs> no, I, I, I will because it's important. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's the interest of history. So the final moments of that battle, the laugh was robbed a decisive victory because of a certain event, what happened? A deal. There has been a deal going on. A deal between? Between Hezbollah and ISIS. OK, that led to the evacuation of a certain it's, number it's of a, fighters it's, back it's, to Syria. It's, it's a strange combination, but yeah, yeah, as you said. I mean, and they, they were able to, uh, to uh, would throw them in a convoy and buses, and uh, and uh, and uh, we were stole uh, full victory. Yes, absolutely. You know, this is a hugely critical uh, piece uh, in U.S. public opinion, and certainly in uh, in Congress. Uh, as far as coordination with Hezbollah on the ground, has it always been limited throughout the campaign to simply deconfliction between the LAF and Hezbollah, right? 
Yeah. Was there, because there's been a lot of concerns around here that there was more than that, or that it was actually a partnership or a co cooperation. Could you tell us a little bit more about that throughout the battle? Was it simply limited to deconfliction and nothing else? No, I don't think there was any, 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 uh, any, uh, coordination or cooperation or for deconfliction purposes with Hezbollah. And, and uh, I made sure to, to, to state it uh, in a right way. I mean, LAF was alone, the only army to be able to repel ISIS fighters uh, uh, from, from the Eastern border. I mean, to, 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 to halt them at the Eastern border. And the conduct of this, uh, this campaign, I mean, the dawn of the hills was 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 purely a left a left a left uh, victory. Okay, can I put my finger on what I believe, and I think you'll agree with me? What was truly exceptional about that battle, which obviously is very different from what happened in Al Badr and what happened in 1999 2000, this was the first. Tell me if I'm wrong. The first operation waged by the LAV that actually used combined arms in a joint fashion. Is that correct? It is correct. Tell me what, for, for, for audiences who are not as well versed in military affairs, what does that really mean? Does that mean multiple services, branches, units working simultaneously together in an integrated fashion? I think you're putting your finger here on, a, on another feat of ingenuity of, of LAF's achievement, I mean, in that battle, by uh, lazing from an airplane uh, uh, over ISIS targets. I mean, uh, for for the uh, for the for uh, laser guided uh, munitions. I mean, from the artillery to to that was that was a, a really I mean high risk but very critical combination that was also uh, uh, put laugh on a on a successful track in in, in its targeting and in and diminishing uh, ISIS ISIS. Uh, deployment. Is that the future, uh, Joseph? Is the future of the army a special forces oriented kind of army, small, nimble, agile, integrated? Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, it depends on the threat that you are talking about. I mean, right. I'm not sure, I'm, I, mean I mean, if we're talking anti-terrorism, I, I definitely agree with you. I mean, with your description. But you know, I mean, in, in, in the context of LAF, I think there is a lot of threats to be taken into consideration. And uh, of course, terrorism on the, is on the top of the list. But I think you should, as a, as, a, as a standing army, you should take into consideration that you might have an open conflict with uh, another army. You should be able also to tailor your capabilities as to be an effective anti-terrorist organized uh, anti-terrorism fighting force, and I think here you need to put more emphasis on special forces, on on on, on combination with air assets, special forces. And yes, I think this is this is definitely the future: low cost, high impact, high return. Right, and obviously, let's be honest: we're talking about Israel in the event of deterring potential uh, conventional aggression. Obviously, given the history of conflict between the two sides. Absolutely. Um, okay, well, you talked about Uncle Sam. Let's talk a little bit more about that in the final few minutes. Uh, tell us about your uh, the last partnership uh, with the U.S. military. How how does this partnership um, uh, how has it evolved? What does it mean to the LAV? Uh, and if you could just give us like maybe one or two nuggets uh, based on your experience uh, that could uh, shed some light on how this partnership has specifically contributed to the development and evolution of the LAF. This partnership is, is a strong partnership that goes back, as I said, to 2006. And I think today, if I, if, I, if I have the numbers right, I mean, the US assistance has reached up to 90% of the total international assistance to the lab. It is covering a very, a very broad and extensive support under numerous assistance programs, to name some FMF, CTPF, IMET, institution building, DETRA, and others. And all are to the benefit of LAF land forces, Navy, Air Force, and the US assistance, I mean, no, no doubt has strengthened and empowered the different capability of LAF, such as fire support, 
maneuver and combat, close air support, ISR, logistic support, border control and security, and we'll get into this later on. I mean, and, and most importantly, I think the United States also assisted in training generation of officers, as I said, impacting GLAF in a great professional way. And not to forget, I mean, the defense institution building program that is really pushing the institutionalization and modernization of GLAF by structuring its defense governance management. Yep. And LAF, in fact, is embracing and consolidating the security assistance with an excellent cooperation. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's best highlighted when, when you see how the Lebanese and American officers are seizing those opportunities to consolidate, I would say, forward constructive steps of security and stability. And to be more specific, I think the land border security project is one case in point. It's a project initially based on the provisions set out by the UN Security Council Resolution 1701. And just to clarify, I mean, between brackets, it's a resolution adopted by the UN Security Council to end the 2006 war between Israel and Hezbollah. So this border project, you have this border project implemented on the Eastern and Northern Lebanese borders. It's one of the brightest examples of this productive partnership. It's a demonstration, in my opinion, of opening one's mind to new thinking and new possibilities to secure at the same time, I mean, US and Lebanese common interests. Yep. And here, I mean, ultimately you're forging a better outcome for all. So in fact, this land border security project is is really of great strategic impact on Lebanon security and stability and the region, I would say. And to conclude, I, I strongly believe that the US LAF partnership is not only contributing to LAF development and evolution, but strongly it is also shaping Lebanon's stability and, and security. Let me ask you two final uh, questions, uh, Joseph, um, and stay on the topic of uh, the partnership with the United States. Um, without patting yourself too much on the back. Why do you think that the LAF, and this is not me, I, like I said, according to the top CENTCOM leadership, why do you think that the LAF stands out really? What is it about this institution that makes them more professionally competent, better able to fight than most other, at least Arab armies in the region? Wow, well, <laughs> I mean, this is this is a very good question to ask to Sankum leadership itself. By the way, you know what they ask here, like when they say ask uh, <laughs> similar questions. What is the secret sauce? So, what is the secret sauce of the left? Well, Recognizing that there are me. many many imperfections, obviously yeah. that we can get into, but uh, there are certain certainly some things that have actually worked, and okay. and I'd obviously, love to highlight that. Obviously, you're insisting on taking me there. So let me answer your question by the saying the following. Let me start by saying actually on that, on several occasions you had CENTCOM commanders, especially I think General Botel and now General McKinsey. They both underscored the importance of strong left partnership with LAF. And I believe, I believe, I mean, by their words, I believe CENTCOM approves some convincing facts and I would say also compelling factors. So I think CENTCOM, CENTCOM sees LAF as definitely as the Lebanese people's most trusted and respected institution. It's an institution of national cohesion. I think also CENTCOM shares with the Lebanese people the sentiment that, that LAF should be the only one that can protect the Lebanese people from security threat. Mm -hmm. And I guess also that CENTCOM appreciates the existence of an excellent cooperation and a great developed military to military relationship. Right. But, but you know, not only that, I personally be believe that it's, it's also about LAF's clean track record of end user monitoring and LAF's track record of commitment and sacrifices in the fight against terrorism. And we've talked about some today with you. And in this context, Context, I think, I think CENTCOM appreciations extend to LAF's willingness to fight. And as stressed on my watch by many American officers, 
and literally I quote, I mean, LAF soldiers demonstrated, LAF soldiers demonstrated captivating fighting spirit and a wow. capability to embrace new military concepts and technologies. End of quote. And to finish, I mean, I truly believe that CENTCOM's support to LAF is, is making of LAF an institution of increased competence. A true fighting force. And, and uh, if I may say, I mean, also a trustworthy partner. And my guess, I mean, is that all of this, I think all of this is meaningful to CENTCOM. Yeah. Can I add one element to it, half jokingly? You know, sometimes, <laughs> yes. it, sometimes it helps to be poor and with little leverage, which means that you really have to be extra sensitive to the preferences of your senior partner. And I think the, the LAF has been extremely sensitive to the wishes and the preferences of the Americans because they know that the biggest source of support remains Washington. And if that kind of assistance is cut, if it's reduced in amount, then actually, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll ask you that question. If Washington pulls the plug tomorrow on the assistance or drastically reduces it, can the LAF survive? Absolutely not. But well, you want to expand on, you can expand on this one or you want to tackle it later? We got one more minute. So if you want to say a word about that, if you want to use that as final thoughts. No, I think, I think. You know what, I'll tell yeah, you why. I mean, in, in, in a couple of words. Have, uh, yes, go have Related to policy actually, because why don't we just like end with that note? because there's been some voices and this is no secret. Uh, I was privy to them when I was in uh, the Pentagon and as you very well know, uh, it's been even reported in the media. This is no secret whatsoever. There's yeah. been a lot of voices coming from various agencies uh, in the United States government uh, uh, proposing to either cut or reduce the amount of assistance that go to the lab for concerns, reasons related to uh, Hezbollah or and whatever wrongly perceived uh, uh, um, relationship between the LAF and Hezbollah, or the fact that the LAF wasn't doing enough to disarm or to counter Hezbollah. So let's just say that those voices come back or um, become more influential, and as a result, the assistance is cut or it's reduced. Can the LAF survive? And if it cannot, as you just said yourself, what is the alternative? Well, You know, I'm, 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 I don't, I, I'm not sure there is enough convincing evidence to support, I mean, a statement that LAF is really, I mean, complex with Hezbollah or whatever. But, I mean, still allow me to highlight a couple of important things here, the way I personally see them. So first, let's, let us admit, I mean, let us admit that the Lebanese circumstances are quite exceptional and complicated, right? And one of these most pertinent complications is that the use of military force is not exclusive to the lab. And I, in my opinion, this is, this is a real challenge for any legal security organization and LAF is no exception. Right. So based on that truth and for the sake of internal security and stability, in my opinion, realities on the ground imply and require LAF to have a kind of a interest-based engagement with all the Lebanese parties. And I guess Hezbollah is one of them. And I, and I would say, I would, I would describe that engagement for deconfliction purposes in order to establish, and in my opinion, this is the, the most important goal, a controlled situation, mm -hmm. an objective of great importance in the Lebanese context, in my opinion. And in that same context, I think one should remember also that LAF is a melting pot of the different Lebanese religious groups. Absolutely. With a well-balanced military assignments. Additionally, one should consider that LAF has a centralized command and control structure. That's right. And, and the way military decision-making dots, I mean, you, you need to understand how they're connected, these dots. And most importantly, I think one needs to assess and balance LAF's delivery in securing national interests and Lebanon's international security commitments. 
versus, I mean, if it's securing partisan interest. I will end here and shift gears now, I mean, to address specifically what you're talking about regarding the consequences of stopping US assistance to the left. Well, I, I strongly believe it will be very serious and negative consequences. And, and if the intent behind such action is to degrade Hezbollah, well, personally, I don't believe the suspension of US assistance to the left may, may reverse Hezbollah's strategy in Lebanon and in the region. And in my humble opinion, I think all this is basically a zero sum game. So what left loses, Hezbollah gains. And in fact, stopping US assistance would weaken left, definitely. But at the same time, it would consolidate furthermore Hezbollah military influence. And I, I, I think also it would leave Hezbollah as a sole significant military force in Lebanon, strengthening by that both Hezbollah political and military ambitions on one hand, and Iran regional hegemony on the other hand. Yeah. And I think this will definitely undermine Lebanon's stability. Yeah. So here, I mean, and, and that, in that context, I think the question remains is, is, is a stable Lebanon in the interest of America? Today, LAF is stronger and more capable because of US assistance. Right. And LAF is depending on it. And in my opinion, stopping or reducing it while Lebanon is enduring this current unprecedented difficult economic crisis, yeah. I think it would be hugely detrimental to LAF's sustainability and operational readiness. Yeah, we haven't talked about that also. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and, and of course, I mean, the expectations are, in my opinion, that this whole situation would further undermine Lebanon's stability and security, of course. But here's the, the, the thing is, is given that LAF's supposed future and capacity to honor its international and national security commitments. Right. But moreover, I mean, this is now, I think you can add this to, 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 to my answer also is that we all know that nature abhors a vacuum. And I mean by that, I mean, if, if the US withdraw its support, personally, I have reasons to believe that many on the other side of the spectrum are waiting in line to fill the gap. Look at China's vote on August 31st for unified renewal to implement the UN Security Council Resolution 1701. Right. That's a very good example of what to expect. Furthermore, I believe, and I know you've wrote something about that. I mean, we are in the middle of a war of ideas and information operations are, are at the heart of it. And when considering the Lebanese theater, the Lebanese public opinion or, or public support, you name it, is, is by excellence, in my opinion, the center of gravity. Therefore, if US commitment to strengthen LAF is to continue, I'm confident that it would consolidate furthermore Lebanon's stability, strengthening by that, that the national consent over LAF's role, and it would increase Lebanese public support and the political backup to the LAF. And to finish answering your question, I believe we all agree, Bilal, that the duty of LAF is to defend Lebanon. And that is despite Hezbollah's position. This is the duty of LAF. By reducing or suspending US security assistance, I think we will have, we will have a LAF not able to play its role as a defender. Right. And in my opinion, this is the crux of the whole subject here, that this is the perfect justification for Hezbollah. Yep, no, well said, well said. I wish you could go longer, uh, Joseph. Uh, I used the excuse of our brief stoppage to go over for another 10 minutes, but I'm pretty sure the events team will give me a hard time about it. And I also put you sufficiently in a lot of trouble with your former colleagues, but um, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I think it's an important conversation to be had most transparently, most candidly, uh, given how uh, important it is for US policy here. Uh, we'll have another conversation at some other time uh, soon, hopefully now that you're a member of the uh, family at MEI. I want to thank you on behalf of the MEI uh, uh, leadership uh, for participating with us. 
thank you for taking the time and uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we will uh, upload uh, the video as soon as possible and I'll share it with you, Joseph, in case you want to share it with your former colleagues. So thank sure. you once again, Joseph. Really appreciate your time and uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you very much, Bilal. I appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Take care, Joseph.